Uh, are you a Rochester native? No, my wife and I are from Niagara County. Uh, mm-hmm. We don't know how we met, but we were, just, we were friends in high school, and we met back up in Rochester years later, and uh, we got married six months after that. So we, and the, so we've been here for well, for uh, since '97 uh, permanently, and raised gotcha. our kids here, and and uh, yeah, it's a it's a good place to be. We always joke that it's it's like a little slice of New York City, but with better parking. <laughs> I like it. Well, <laughs> so, We'll come back to more on the Flower City in a second, but we're going to go back to Niagara County. Um, sure. What was it like uh, growing up there? Was there much of an arts community? Were your, your parents kind of more on the artistic side? Yeah, my mom was an art teacher in Williamsville and uh, elementary, and um, and my dad was a diesel mechanic. But they both they both supported the creative the creative uh, inclinations since I was a little kid. I happen to have, my mom is too cool. She saved this from the first day of kindergarten. I don't know if it'll show up. 1978, first day of kindergarten, C-3PO poster, my first Star Wars poster, which is fun because now I'm getting paid, paid to do Star Wars posters. So that's pretty fun. That, that is incredible. I, that, that made my day. I needed to see that. <laughs> um, yeah. I uh, get a kick out of it. So, well, I, this kind of answered it, but I still want to ask it anyway. Was there sort of a moment when you and your family like realized that you are an artist? Was it that C-3PO poster or was it something after that? It was before that. When I was four years old, my dad took me to see the original Star Wars movie. And um, it's like it, it's like it supercharged my little imagination. And then I was drawing stuff. And then, of course, the action figures showed up in the world. And I would make little scenes and draw those. And uh, so I... I was just about, I guess, four years old when it really kicked in, and and uh, and um, it's funny that all the toys help me think three dimensionally, playing with them, and moving them, and that helps that helps with drawing tremendously. Absolutely. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more about your formal education. So you said you went to mm-hmm. uh, like you live you're from Niagara County. I assume you went through your, your like primary yeah. school there. Uh, did you go to college? If so, yeah, where and what was here. that experience like? Sure, I came out here for RIT. And um, shortly after graduating, like like a lot of folks do, I really like this area, so I stayed, and and uh, and here I am. Awesome. Uh, what was your first foray into the uh, art world like? Was it doing posters? Was it doing other kind of artwork? Oh, I see. No, I'm I'm technically a, a graphic designer, commercial illustrator guy, and I went full freelance in 2007. Um, and uh, I do. These days, it's mostly toy industry, like licensed toys and collectibles. And so I, I do packaging and product design. And uh, I can show you real quick. I, I designed this guy, a Cylon from Battlestar Galactica, little bobblehead guy. I designed him. A um, lot of packaging. These are two of my favorites from recent years. Um, uh, action figure packaging. And, uh, you know, this kind of stuff. And, and uh, there we go. Wow. And I, it, it helps because I really enjoy... Oh, and of course, Bob Ross. I designed the box for the Bob Ross goodie. Gotta have Bob Ross. He's the man. And uh, so I, I tend to lean toward nerdy nonsense and to really enjoy it. So um, knowing the subject matter so well, uh, it helps me do a better job for my clients. And I'm, it's crazy. The fun part is I've got, I'm in my little house here in North Whitton Village and uh, in Rochester. And the upstairs bedroom here I've done work for clients all over the world and it's really I'm really grateful that I can do that and it's just a fun little a fun little thing I like to share with the community now that hey there's something cool happening in Rochester along with all the other cool things happening in Rochester so absolutely um, so I know it's hard to answer this question sometimes um, but I actually grew up on uh, Star Trek uh, to to the point where which the first time I saw Reading Rainbow with LeVar Burton, I exclaimed mm-hmm. to my parents, oh, look, it's Jordy. It's Jordy. Yep. So I remember the show set and everything, the, the, the show set when he was doing, giving a tour on, the, on Reading Rainbow, I remember. Yeah. Yep. Oh, he did do that. Ooh. Wow. Um, I, I think I said that even before the, the tour set episode. Like, I, the first time I watched it, it was like, oh, yeah, that's Jordy. And, like, it was st- he was still Jordy to me until I realized yeah. that, like, he's a obviously a separate person <laughs> you know what i mean real human 
Right. Um, so, I mean, what, so I, I, I preface all this because like, I still love Star Trek and you know, it's in, in sort yeah, of a, yeah. in, in sort of a weird way, it's kind of informed how I view the world and sort of my ethical compass in some ways. Um, but sure. you know, when, when you're that young and you see Star Wars, can you really remember what about it captivated you so much? I think just the visuals and it felt like a real world. They, you know, it's widely known that they tried to make it look used. It wasn't flashy, shiny, everything. It felt so real. And there was such a, such a cast of different creatures and characters. And those were all works of art by the props department and the creature shop and the whole thing. And um, it was a giant artwork in a sense that they put together to tell a story from the models they used for the ships and even the writing and the music, the whole thing. Um, it's a big creative collaboration and I, some part of me caught that even as a four year old and, and uh, throughout the years, I just, I got it that that was, that was just, there was a giant fireball of creative stuff right in front of me on a big screen and I just, I ate it right up. So. What was your first Star Wars project? Cause it obviously wasn't these Mandalorian posters. So what was right. your first Star Wars project? And then, like I would probably faint if I got a call from Star Trek mm -hmm. and they said, you know, we want you to work on something or we want you to like play a bit part or something. So what was your first official Star Wars project and what happened when you got the call? I was actually working at a design firm here in town and we got the call um, from Hasbro because they wanted some, just some outside fresh influence. And one of the, one of the owners had a relationship with somebody at Hasbro professionally and, and um, so I got put on the team, which I, they knew, you know, they knew from my desk that I, I needed to be on the team for the Star Wars project. And it was just the, uh, the Hasbro action figure packaging. They wanted some new, fresh concepts for how to make that look. Um, that was about 15 years ago now. And um, I, one of my designs was semi-chosen in that somebody within Hasbro for their rounds, they had something pretty much what I had done. So they chose the Hasbro employee one, of course, to run with. But I was still, you know, it was still cool to know that that uh, I sort of, sort of almost contributed at that point. I've done a lot of concept art for products that didn't end up getting produced. Um, sometimes a company will pitch it, but then for various reasons it won't get picked up. So I've done several things in different product categories, but they didn't get made eventually. So, um, and that was more about packaging or product design. So it's with the poster stuff, is, is it okay to jump over to that? Absolutely. You read my mind. That was the next thing I was going to ask about. All right. Great. Uh, for the poster stuff, um, about four years ago, a friend over at a Factory Entertainment out in California, I'd done some product design and packaging stuff with them. They said, hey, we're doing a series of vintage location travel poster style designs for Universal Monsters from Universal Studios. They said, you don't want to take a crack at that, do you? They, they didn't really know me from my illustration side. And um, you'll see behind me, there's the there's the one, it's based on the 1930s Boris Karloff mummy. So all the characters and everything, um, it's all stuff from the film. I turned into an Egypt travel poster. And uh, so that, that was really, um, that really piqued my interest. So I started doing more of that kind of work. I've done other universal properties and um, I did Jaws and I did uh, a bunch of them now. And then did one for um, HBO, which I can't talk about yet which is kind of cool to say. It's like, I'm a really lame version of a spy, you know? So, um, yeah. And, uh, and so I just ended up doing some more. I did some just for fun for, uh, when favorite actors would be coming to Flower City Comic Con in town. And I would just, I'd do a poster just for fun and, um, give one to them and have them autograph one for me and the family here. And, um, and, uh, so that's, that's been a lot of fun too. And so when it came to Mandalorian, I saw there was a flood of Baby Yoda, which is, I don't know if I'm legally allowed to call it, it's the child, but everybody knows him as Baby Yoda. So um, I was talking to my one son and I said, I want to do a poster. Mandalorian was fantastic. I want to do a poster design um, and see if anybody's interested. And my son suggested the guy at the very beginning with the, with the flute who calls the speeders and this guy. And... Um, I thought, what a cool idea. You know, we love us some Baby Yoda, but let's do something different. And so I showed it to a few contacts, and sure enough, Acme Archives said, yes, we're going to do it. We're going to do a whole series. And uh, so this is just one of three so far. 
Um, I had hoped to have the other two uh, approved by Lucasfilm by today so I could show them to you, but they'll be out in a few weeks. They're going to feature them on StarWars.com, um, their Mando Mondays YouTube show. They're going to feature the next two. So, so this is one of a set, and, uh, and so that's kind of how I got from this to this. And, uh, and it's, it's still going strong. They've got other projects for me. And uh, again, it's that weird thing of I, I signed a non-disclosure agreement, so I can't talk about any further cool stuff at the moment, but, uh, but it's coming. So um, I was going to say, that's how you know you've made it when like, you're doing an art project and you have to sign an NDA. Like, that's, you know, that's, yeah, like, that's a made it feeling. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of cool. It's, uh, maybe, maybe it's a bit lame to, get, to still get excited about a non-disclosure agreement with Lucasfilm. Uh, but uh, yeah, if I if I could show my ten year old self what I'm working on now and getting paid to do for a living, um, yeah, he'd, he'd probably faint temporarily or do a little dance. But. Now that I'm older, it, it's really like it's interesting. I look at that guy and I think to myself, oh, that's so Henson esque. Okay, you know, yeah, there's yeah. something about it that's just like wow. That's like right out of you know his workshop, and it's like half. Yeah it's like part Farscape, but it's part yeah. Star Wars. And it's like, it's, it's like, mm -hmm. but it's, it's funny. I can look at that, see that. And in a way that makes it feel more real and less alien. And it's, it's a, it's a weird thing now that I'm older looking at, not that I'm old, but now that I'm looking at that yeah, older, I'm like, Oh, like this is clicking now in a way mm -hmm. that it didn't when I was younger. And I'm sure you can appreciate that too. I um, One quick note that is really fun. I don't know if you saw the guy who played him, this, the flute guy, he played a few different characters in the background. He was that, the scary black droid in the uh, prison break episode. And um, he's, he's C-3PO in all of anything that's not in the movies, in the actual films, any appearances on shows like Lego Masters or awards shows or um, his name's Chris Bartlett. And he, uh, I, he's a friend of a friend, it turns out. And my friend said, oh, can I show it to him? So I did. And so we got talking. He's a graphic designer by day for the video game industry. And so we, we kind of, uh, struck up this great conversation for a bit and I'm going to send him a um, one to have autographed and then they're, they're going to make another one for him to keep and he's he's very excited about that so the guy who played this thing uh, is uh, is now sort of a friend in the, in the world out there and I think that's kind of fun very meta all right so let's I, get let's get back on track here you know so for me <laughs> as a reporter like I've done video work prior to this and I still do a lot of other video work but there was something that like clicked for me you know, when I got in the groove of being a reporter, I'm like, oh, this is this is what I'm good at. This is what makes sense to me. This is yeah. it sort of fits my personality type well. Um, you know, what about, I know you do a lot of other stuff, but I can kind of tell yeah. from, you know, us talking about it that posters are some, like, because you just, you do them, even if you're not, you know, paid to do them, you do them. Right. What about, yeah. what about doing posters clicks for you and what do you love about doing posters? It's, um, it reminds me of, um, I always loved movie posters. Uh, I got the, I got the Drew Struzan 1997 posters on my wall in the office um, from the Star Wars re-releases. But it's like encapsulating the story in a in a thing, and it's got that magic sense of like extra nostalgia when it's got that that hint of vintage travel poster stuff. It's something about that I always loved. I love that style. Um, back in the day, they did it all by hand, of course. This, these are vector art, which. It's kind of like digital cut paper with little shapes and and uh, all put together. Um, like this is this is all made up of tiny little shapes, which you can you'll be able to see when I send you the image. And the fun part is, um, one of those shapes is the baby Yoda head that I always hide it in the whole series. I'm I'm sorry I can't show it to you yet, all three uh, so far. But there's a tiny little baby Yoda head hidden in the details of the poster somewhere. So whoever gets up close to one sometime can look for that. And um, the next two posters are, uh, I can't say too much yet, but um, they'll be announced in hopefully a couple weeks. We'll have those all approved and, and uh, on, on, the, on the internet. Um, and it's nice, Acme Archives is great because they, they print it on archival stuff. It's the Giclee, it's, it's just, it's nice quality, it comes with a certificate of authenticity and the whole bit. And um, so it's, it's pretty amazing to see my name my name on the certificate next to the Star Wars logo. It's just kind of, you know, my internal four-year-old is, is skipping around. But. Well, I mean, like, I know that, you know, I, I think it, it's funny how the things that when we're really young sort of like inform what excites us as adults. And you, you keep sure. mentioning 
you know, how like now that you're working on Star Wars excites your four and 10 year old selves respectively. But like as an adult, man, I know it's like a weird, this might be like a weird question, but like you talk about how excited your inner kid is, but like, what does this mean to you as an adult? And like big picture that you're doing this like that, like you there, like there's sort of that primal excitement because that's what you had when you were young. But like as an adult, can you like pull back and like, sort of recognize what this means that you're connected to this company and you're doing this? Oh yeah. It's, it's wild to, to like we were talking about earlier, signing the non-disclosure with, um, with Disney Lucasfilm, like this is kind of really happening. This is pretty cool, you know? And, uh, you know, inner, inner child is dancing around and, uh, current modern day self is still, I can still just appreciate that it's, um, it's a career, Pinnacle, and I could say all kinds of big words that sound fancy and grown up, but it's just cool. It's it's very cool, and that um, that excitement from my younger self it shows up in the work, and that's really key. So I my office is full of nerdy junk and and uh, action figures and whatnot, and and um, that really does that really does help get that extra little emotional oomph when I'm creating these designs and. Um, so that helps a lot to, to keep that inner kid skipping around and happy. <laughs> so. I love it. I, I have, I always end my, these sort of interviews uh, with creative people, with interesting people, with what I call uh, the lightning round, but feel sure. free to take your time. There are three okay. big picture questions, but because you're a Star Wars guy, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask one more. So we'll get to that in a second. Okay. Um, First one of these, um, it's usually geared towards Rochesterians. We have another Rochester question in a second. Um, but sure. it's really about your hometown. Um, what about growing up in Niagara County uh, really helped you become the artist you are today? Um, it sounds silly, but it was just the, it was the local library. Um, and Niagara County is a beautiful place. It's a beautiful place. And from our little ranch house roof on a summer day, you could see the, the mist of the falls way out on the horizon from Niagara Falls. And um, they call it rainbow country because of all the, the mist. And um, so growing up out there really, really, uh, it's just, it's a beautiful, beautiful part of the state. And um, so it was support from my parents, support from teachers, which they're not geographic specific, but, um, and then it was the North Tonawanda Public Library. Uh, that my dad always took us to my mom and, and they had tons of how to draw books. And one of those books was the art of the production art from Return of the Jedi. And you know, so that, again, Star Wars, you know, so I, um, I took that out over and over and studied the, all the production art from when they're making the movies. And, and um, so there it is. I like it. So we've talked a lot about the, the theme of big accomplishments and what they mean throughout this interview. But if you could accomplish one thing that you haven't yet, and you think that would be like it, the crowning achievement, what do you mm. think that one thing would be? Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a tough one. Um, I hope you can edit this because I need a second. Absolutely. Yeah. Take okay. a second. Yeah, no rush. Yeah. Yeah. I've done, I've checked off my list of cool things to work on in terms of different licenses and properties. And, you know, I've done Lord of the Rings. I've done Star Wars now, which was, you know, that's the big one. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I may have hit my, <laughs> May have hit my uh, hit my coolness pinnacle with these Mandalorian posters, but I guess to be to be contacted by uh, by Lucasfilm to work on some concept art for their uh, new stuff to just be a uh, one of the concept art uh, one of the concept art um, artists that they they tap to submit ideas about things. I think that would that would top it for sure. I like it. I was going to say there, there are no right or wrong answers with these things. I know that sure. they're, they're big questions. So you're totally good. Um, mm -hmm. Last question, uh, 3A, because we do have a 3B. Uh, cool. 3A, do you have any advice for aspiring artists? Um, treat people respectfully, turn on, turn and work on time and keep on practicing. I love it. Question 3B, who shot first? Oh, Han shot first. Why even ask? I, 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 because you gotta. The, 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 the you joke is, job if you didn't. Right, I was gonna say, the joke yeah. is not the answer, the joke is the question. The joke is the question. 